Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and I am back with um, some of our junk journal um, page ideas, and I did that little poll, thank you guys so much for giving me input, and it's so interesting as I come up with um, how I want to put this series together, how the ideas end up sort of overlapping, but um, the last video that I did in this series, we did some um, of these flips and flaps that also incorporated lots of pockets, right? And then some interactive elements. And that by far flips and flaps was, um, the most requested. So we'll be having more videos that specifically, um, look at flips and flaps. But then, um, the, the next idea that had the most votes was page layout layouts. And, um, I realized a lot of my page layouts um, have flips and flaps and they have pockets and they have um, different pieces. And so this one, I think, really is going to speak to a way to work on a page layout kind of from scratch. And it's definitely going to have some flips and flaps and it's going to have some pockets and it's going to be very interactive. I've also had people say, you know, they'd like to see some interactive page ideas. So I guess this is sort of a catch all, but hopefully will be of interest. So what I did was I just randomly opened to a page in my journal. Um, and now that I'm thinking about it, I may pick where it's a little more plain because we're going to be adding a lot of stuff to it. So we'll work on these pages just because I feel like it and it'll be fun. So then I grabbed um, a little bit of junk mail. I did cover up um, personal information, but I grabbed some, uh, I had cut this apart at one point thinking I'd use it and hadn't used it, a um, little piece of cardboard, and then a large, I've got a couple of large sheets of, from that um, vintage bird book page. So what I want is when we turn to, to this page or this page, whichever side I decide to install it on, I want to have this fun, um, interactive um, page. And so I haven't measured, I haven't thought through yet how this is going to work, but I, I do love using envelopes in, on journal pages. So for example, if you got to this page and you had this envelope, then you have this, of course, great tuck spot. Um, you could have hidden journaling sp um, space under here so that you don't really see the journaling initially. But um, th that's one idea, but then we can just kind of keep going from there. So what I'm thinking is I'm also, and I'd folded this up at one point, and so I'm gonna see if I can just, I'm gonna see if I can just use the folds that I have. Let's see. Um, let's see what might work. So if I have this page down, and maybe we'll do it this way. All right, so then we've got a page extender. So now we're gonna have this whole page to do something with. Um, and then you open up and we're gonna have um, a nice large, if we leave it wide open, tuck spot. And well, if we install our envelope, this would also open up. So maybe we'll have something that starts to look like this. Or we could fold this one first and have the envelope over. I think I kind of like that better. And then I had an idea of using this large strip and maybe put it in way in the back and it could flip over top. So when you get to this page, look, we've got to flip up, open, open. And I'm gonna put all this down soon. First, I'm just trying to think. Um, okay. And then maybe overlapping these two, this could be kind of that hidden journaling space. And these will all, I'll cover with some other papers and we'll layer um, in a little bit. So I think I want it like this. And of course, you see how you can just kind of keep going and going and going? Now, depending on how much I layer on top and if I put any pockets or anything chunky in there, you know, it could get a little thick, but right now it's still pretty thin. So let's set these aside and let's let's put it together. Okay, so um, this is 
kind of my bottom layer. So I'm gonna set those aside carefully. Now, if you guys want measurements or you wanna cut your junk mail or your card stock to do something similar to mine, I will give you the measurements, but again, please don't feel bound by this. So this strip right here, if it's opened up, is 14 inches long. Folded in half, it's seven inches long and two and a quarter inches wide. And I'm going to add it to my page pretty close to the top of the page. So I'm just gonna add glue all along the back here. And again, this is just one of those, it's a pretty decent weight cardstock, but just one of those junk mail flyer things you get. And I save, of course I do, right? I save all of that. All right, and I'm gonna put it pretty much in the center of the page. Okay, now to remember what I'm doing, I'm picking up the whole pile. Open it up, open this one. All right, so this is gonna go in last. Now, for this page, I kinda want the book page to come pretty close to the edge. And um, now I could leave it open so we could tuck something in here as well. But I, I'm not gonna do that. I think I've got enough going on and I wanna have enough structure. So I am gonna, I love those little bird bases. Hmm. I kinda hate that I'm gonna be covering them up. It makes me a little sad. Um, is there a way to save them? That's what I'm thinking now. Okay, I'm not gonna confuse us. I am going to go back to what I was doing, which is this. So we have a nice big page extension. So we're gonna add glue to this whole panel. And again, this is a really, this is like a coffee table size book. The piece of paper I'm using, I tore the ragged edge off. Let's see, is this is almost 11 and a half inches and then by eight and a half. And then I folded, or it was already folded, let's see. It's almost a two and a half inch pocket, and this section is five and a quarter. So, if that helps any, we are going to glue this section. And this section is almost four inches wide. And because I tore this, you know, the edges are not even, but I'm okay with that. So just so you can see where I'm adding glue, I'm gonna add glue to this entire back section. And I hope you noticed, I of course I stopped to give you guys the measurements, but I really played with this and laid it down and made sure I had it turned the way that I wanted it. And I wasn't getting confused because it's definitely easier to kind of play with it before you glue it down. All right, I'm going pretty close to the edge. Get that as straight as I can. Okay, so that is glued down. And then this is going to, it could be a flap, but I'm gonna make this into a pocket. So I'm gonna add glue just to these two edges. If I wanted to make it like kind of two smaller pockets, I could, but I'm gonna leave it wide open. <laughs> so in case I have something tall I wanna put in there. Now this one, gotta make sure it fits in there right. And I actually liked folding it up this way. But this one, I'm just gonna glue using the envelope flap. So I just need to add glue to this section. And if you don't have, if you haven't been saving junk mail or whatever, you know, you could just use some scrap of paper. You could make an envelope. I mean, you know, don't don't be like, oh, well, I can't make that idea because I don't have any of the supplies. You really can adjust this idea to what you have on hand. All right. And now I want this to be my kind of like a hidden journaling spot. And you just wanna make sure when you put it in, everything is still folding okay. Now I could have layered all of these up with my pretty papers um, and made it look super fabulous before I glued it all together. But again, this really is an idea book and um, I just kinda of wanna get, I, I wanna remember 
the idea behind it more so than um, how to decorate it. Um, but I am going to give you a couple of ideas of things that I might do to jazz this up um, just because that part is super fun. Um, we could add a pocket. We, we could do all kinds of stuff. Um, but for right now, I'm going to leave it like that. So you guys know I love to use my... I love to use punches and I like having tags and tabs on things. And if you don't have a punch that does a, a, a tab like this, we could we could make one together um, not using a punch. So of course, using the punch, you end up with a piece. This is really thick. And I was thinking, wouldn't it be cute to have a little tab right here? on the end of this, not that you can't tell you're going to lift it up, but I just think that would be cute. So that so that's one idea. But if you don't have this punch, um, let's let's just make a fun, a fun tab with that one. So cut a piece of paper. This is really actually heavier cardstock than, than I wanted. Let's cut it one and three quarter inches by two and a half. So cut a piece of paper or cardstock one and three quarter inches by two and a half, because I'm gonna make a pretty large one. Fold it in half, okay? And now, I mean, honestly, there you go, you have a tab. But if you wanna jazz it up, you could round the corners, you could, um, cut them off, you know, just at an angle, kind of like a tab type of cut. I'm going to get, I have um, my corner rounder and I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna use the quarter inch side and I'm gonna round it. And then I now have a tab for my journal. Now, again, Imagine we're, you know, we're starting to layer papers, we're doing something cute and fun. And then on this tab, homemade tab we just made, we can add something that makes it look really cool. So I'm just gonna, again, the more, the more you go with this and the more ideas you come up with, then suddenly you're like, oh, it really becomes fun. All right, I'm just gonna kind of hold it about where I think I want it to be. Glue one side, and then, oh, I don't know if I'm on camera or not. I've been trying to zoom in a little bit more on my videos. I got a request from somebody saying they were having trouble seeing some of the little things I was doing, but it always worries me that I may be out of frame, and if so, I apologize. Okay cute, right? So we used a tab. And then, you know, it might be fun to kind of have a whole theme as we go through <laughs> uh, this, um, this flip. So let's do that. Let's just add little tabs to kind of show the user where the next, the next element is. So we'll put one on this side. And now this one opens up next. So I wanna make sure whatever tab we make to put here is um, not too large. Oh, I was gonna show you if you have, let me just pull it out. So sometimes when you have digital papers, you end up with things of this shape, right? So you can cut that out with scissors. To save us time, I'm gonna grab my punch. Now it's the same idea of a shape, but it's just smaller. And um, you'll see what I mean. It's just tinier, but you can use something this shape to make a really cute tab too. And I'm going to put the tab on this page just because I want to down here. So there's another idea for you. Okay, and then when I come back <clears throat> later to
to get these ideas, I'll be able to say, oh, that was so cute. All right, and then another super easy way to make a tab that I think looks impressive is, let me get a circle punch. I'm gonna use, it's a little bit big. Why don't we use, I'm gonna use one and a quarter and um, find some paper you like. I'm gonna just chomp, chomp these up. And you can add, and of course I'd be inking around the edges and doing all kinds of things. And I certainly wouldn't leave this with quick lane on there. But add the circle to the center. And then on the other side, just put another circle. And now I have a cute tab that's a circle. All right. All right, I really like it. I think it's neat and it's fun and it's interactive. Now, does it look super cute right now? No, it does not. Um, but once I get it really decorated, it's going to be um, really fun. So that is a page layout idea. Now, because we have, I, th I think I'm gonna do one more idea for you guys today that is a similar concept, but um, a little bit interactive, but a pocket. So, let me decide. This is, it's not super fragile, but I'm going to leave it just as a rectangle book page. And I got to remember how I did this. Um, ooh, I'm sorry. The one I want to do is not using a rectangle. It's actually using a square. Let me see. Is this a square? Eight. Ah, it is. Okay, so what we're going to do is you want kind of a large square, but let me let me make it, and then you can kind of decide what might be the best size. But this is approximately an eight by eight inch square, and you could think, oh, you know, great big huge pocket. But what's fun, look at this. <laughs> when you have one that's large, and of course this isn't printed on double-sided paper, but you get the idea. Now what we have is a fun, pocket depending on um you know which side of the paper you put it on I think it makes sense to put it here and then another pocket here you could also attach this and this could open up and have like a hidden journaling spot if you didn't want it to be a double pocket I think the way I'm gonna put mine on is I'm gonna make it have two pockets so I'm gonna add glue to this side and to this side this edge And of course, when you think of page layouts, right, it's like, where do you put the pockets and how do you design it? So um, I'll come up with, hopefully, lots of ideas for us to explore together as we do our idea book. Um, so now I need something to work as my... I left this side open so that something large would fit in, otherwise it would have to be narrow. And then for this pocket, I'm just going to add the glue to this edge. Now, we have two pockets. And I really like, again, depending on what you use, um, what kind of paper you use, I think it can look really nice. Um, I might even do something like this. Just take some book page and layer it on this pocket and it would look really good. Of course, that's upside down. Does it really matter if it's upside down, Pam? Probably not. Let me see. Everything's gonna be upside down the way I'm doing it. Okay, there we go. A piece that won't be upside down. And then I'm gonna tear it here and I'm gonna show you where, again, if you really want that idea of some hidden journaling space, we could glue this down, all the way down. Adding my glue. Covering up that white space, right? And then this flips open. And what if this was all just neutral writing paper, right? Let's find a piece from a book. 
I'm gonna find a piece, and I could have used a piece that didn't, <laughs> that already started out neutral. <laughs> but I do like on this side that we have some writing. All right, and, and this is, I, I am going a little bit further with this one, but when I come back and review this idea, I'll be like, oh, that's what you intended. Um, if you don't want to go ahead just for your idea book and go to this much work, just write on here. Add writing paper, add journaling paper, right? And then you'll know what you're talking about when you come back, you know, six months from now when you can't remember what we did, and or at least if you're like me, that's what will happen. Um, you'll be glad you wrote yourself a little note. And now it's like that. And if it's popping up, bothering you, use a Velcro dot or add, add a circle or something right here to hold it down. Let me find, let me make us another circle. And of course, it won't reach, but I can make it reach. All right. If you put a circle right here. And you can use any shape you want. Just add it, add adhesive to a portion, like not quite half of the circle. And it just gives it a little place to tuck in. So it's not completely flipping up on you. And you don't have to do that. That's optional. All right. I hope you like these ideas. I hope you're going to try them out. Go grab yourself some junk mail. And especially for your idea book, you know, just use what you have on hand. And then when you go to do it in a fancy journal, if you don't want to use your junk mail or have to lay or use pretty paper. All right. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel so you'll get notified whenever um, I post new content. Thank you guys for watching. If you have ideas and suggestions, reach out, leave me a comment, send me a message. Um, if you do some of these ideas, tag me so I can see what you created. I love that. Um, thanks so much. And until next time, have a great day.